Halo Infinite's campaign is going to be something we've never seen before. So this section right here is going to be essentially Halo Infinite in a nutshell. What's going on everybody? Kevin here once again. Today we're doing another discussion kind of video, mainly because I'm on vacation. I'm stockpiling up videos right now. So when I'm away on vacation, away from my computer and everything, I can at least give you guys some content. Today, I wanna to talk about is Halo Infinite's campaign. And before we, so we jump in, I think the proper mission to play here is the mission Halo from Combat Evolved. I mean, just look at that. That's the big wow shot right there that a lot of people are going to talk about when it comes to playing Halo. This is the mission, mission right here that a lot of people at 343 are base, essentially basing Halo Infinite off of is this mission because of how open-ended, how awe-inspiring it is, and how much it just sets the entire tone of the game right here. And so in this commentary, what I want to do is talk about Halo Infinite's campaign, and this isn't really necessarily anything like fact related, it's just from my knowledge right now, my experience with Halo and what I would like to see and how I currently, from everything that we've seen about Halo Infinite's campaign, is it going to be something that we're going to like? Because Halo Infinite's campaign is going to be something we've never seen before. And oh, by the way guys, if the game looks kind of different, that's because I'm currently utilizing a reshade filter on here. You can see, uh, I pre previously made a video about this reshade filter. If you guys want to check that out, uh, it's on my channel right here. Essentially, it just kind of gives you much more of a classic CE vibe with anniversary graphics as well as trying to go in for the whole thing. And also just going for a more cinematic, visual, appealing kind of look to the whole thing as well. But anyways, though, so Halo Infinite's campaign. There's a lot of different ways that they're going about doing this. It's, a lot of people have said it's open world. 343 themselves have really been trying to stray away from saying the word open world for the most part. It seems like what 343 is trying to do is almost kind of like a Halo 3 ODST style of campaign where basically you have these different kind of checkpoints within the open-ish world or open environment and then you have go about it, do it however you want. We'll kind of see that maybe later on in this video. Uh, potentially with like the last three bases on this mission in particular for the mission Halo where you can pick off which you know three Marines you want to go save and stuff like that. So that's kind of like their philosophy with the campaign so I figured playing this mission would be the right mission to t play while talking about Halo Infinite's campaign. It's gonna be kind of interesting exactly how they go about telling us. It does seem like it's still kind of like gonna push you down like a certain narrative in a way where you have these main Eats that you need to hit when it comes to playing the campaign, but there's also going to be a ton of extra side content you can do along while just kind of on your way while playing the campaign for the main missions and things like that, which we've never experienced before in Halo. Halo's always been like one track on the way, just go do this thing and you save the world basically. Well, 343 kind of strain away from the open world phrasing is probably the right way to look about it because the difference between what it seems like what uh, Halo Infinite is looking to do and what your typical open world is going to be because the open world's like you spawn into the world and you have everything available to go to all at once. Think of like Grand Theft Auto, right? As soon as you jump into Grand Theft Auto, you're able to play the entire area of the map. Like nothing's locked off to you, nothing's sectioned off or anything like that. With Halo Infinite, it seems like that's going to be some kind of sectioning off of the map. Just so you kind of focus you down a certain kind of storyline and things like that. Which I think is actually the best way to go about telling a Halo story is doing that because I really do want to experience like that cohesive narrative where like, you know, very cinematic, almost like what, almost like playing through a movie, which was kind of like the, always the big appeal about playing Halo, especially with like Halo 2 and Halo 3. You definitely felt like you were playing through a movie rather than just like a video game or just like a shooting gallery of just walking through hallways and blowing stuff up, you know what I mean? Which has always been like a huge appeal of Halo, being able to capture that sci-fi world and fantasy super well and its uh, mechanics and also gameplay. This Elite will not go down. There we go. <laughs> now I'm playing on normal too. I'm just chilling with you guys right now. So it's going to be kind of interesting about these side missions though that are going to be off the quote-unquote golden path that they keep referencing within all these updates for Halo Infinite. Because, like, why go save Marines? Why go follow this path of Sentinels that apparently lead to a cave or something? Like, what's what's the point, you know? Like, I mean, what I think about games doing this is, like, oftentimes there's a game like Destiny, right? Where they have 
if different kind of like areas you can go check out throughout the your, their maps, which are not necessarily worlds, I guess you can call them, but like more ma expanded maps. Um, like say like vaults and stuff like that, where you can go in and just play through a mission. At the end, you get like a chest that has like some form of loot or some currency or some kind of useful resource. Halo Infinite's not going to have that. It's going to be, you know, your standard Halo game. Now we do know we will be able to upgrade equipment and sounds like over time to what capacity and how exactly uh, we have no idea they just said that there'll be ways for you to upgrade your equipment while playing uh, it sounds like maybe kind of like enhancing things like cooldowns being shorter or things that have longer ranges or being more maybe dur more durable or something like or maybe better, better accuracy or you know various other things because there's a ton of different equipment that we don't know that's going to be in the game yet so with these side missions be something that could help like improve your equipment in a way or your shielding or something which kind of goes into a little bit like an rpg almost element-esque in a way which is certainly uh something we've never experienced within the halo game you've never been able to like upgrade your character uh traits beyond just like grabbing a better weapon which is something I still want to see 343, you know, maintain. I feel like it's kind of the core experience with Halo is having a limited set of traits, but having a expansive amount of sandbox options. And a lot of people just think like having the most options possible means better game and stuff like that. Not necessarily. Um, yeah, this might, this is a di completely different genre or media and stuff like that. But um, one quote I remember vividly is from uh, Jack White from the White Stripes, who the reason why he it's just him and the drummer the whole time is he found ways to be more creative with less tools to work with essentially, not having a bass, not having keys, or just drums, guitar, one guitar, and vocals, and doing the best you can with what your talent has to offer. And I think like Halo's always kind of followed that similar philosophy of just not giving the player like so much mobility, so much in the way of accuracy and just basically being able to do everything all at once essentially which you know gaming kind of especially fps games went down that genre for a bit uh during the um early to mid 2010s as like with games like timefall call of duty followed that halo followed it a little bit as well like advanced movement and things like that but honestly like a lot of times with limitations comes more options for creativity and things like that which is something that I think Halo does a fantastic job on and saying that Halo Infinite's putting a bigger emphasis on the sandbox itself does reassure me that that's kind of the philosophy that they're going with. Man, look at this visuals. Oh my god, I love... CE just never gets old, man. The game just looks so good. Obviously, I, like I said, I'm using a little bit of a filter here. As you can see what the game naturally looks like. But this is like my reshade filter I put on there. Just, I feel it just adds cooler tones and makes it more CE or original kind of vibes with it. So I've really been focusing on the campaign gameplay, but what about the campaign story itself? There's a lot of loose ends that need to get tied up within Halo Infinite. Are they going to do it within the initial story? Because obviously there's going to be campaign DLC, which we've never had before as well, which is really exciting to hear about. You know, 343 tried this with uh, Warren Ops and it didn't exactly pan out exactly how they wanted it to. Oh no, stay alive, friend! Here we go. You know I had to do the big jump. The classic Cortana line, this is not a natural structure. <gasps> no S, man. No S. It's going to be interesting to see how 343 ties up loose ends from Halo 5 while also having a fresh start and also continuing on the elements, the events that happened in Halo 5. I'm really glad that it's not like a complete like reboot of the Halo franchise. And now they say, say that it's more of a soft reboot. Or, or spiritual reboot where you try and get like the classic feels but continuing on the story because I'm glad that they the events that happen in Halo 5 still matter and they're not like completely retconned and you go uh we just cut everything we were trying to do and do some and just go back to what we were no works kind of thing because there are some elements within Halo 5's or 343 story elements that they've brought up I actually enjoy you know I think the Forerunner stuff is pretty cool uh being able to play around with like Forerunner weapons and Having them be more prominent within the story, I think it's great. Actually diving a little bit more into the sci-fi side of things. Is, you know, I think maybe the 343 might have gone a little too far sometimes. But like the sci-fi side of stuff. When it comes to like the design and just feel of the game as a whole. But, uh, you know, the expanded lore really goes like crazy into the sci-fi realm. When it comes to Halo. And when you play CE, you kind of just feel like 
a normal soldier that's like really pop buff and like can take a lot of damage but everything feels rather grounded and i think that's one aspect that 343 kind of lost a little bit with their reclaimer saga is the groundedness that i think halo's always kind of felt you know it didn't really ever feel like it was so sci-fi that it was just like out of the realm of possibilities in a way and I think 343 kind of leaned into that a little too much. That's what the spiritual reboot's all about. We do know like Aatrox is out there. Ashram looks to be like the main villain when it comes to playing Halo Infinite. Will Aatrox come back? Uh, are the created still like a thing, right? Are the Guardians still going to be a factor within Halo Infinite's gameplay? Are they going to come like at the very end as like a lead into like the next DLC or something? Uh, they're just... And while also trying to get like a spiritual reboot so then people who just jump in have a good starting point uh just because that was a big issue with halo 5 story which is like there was so much outside of the game material that you needed to know to understand like really like the significance of everything that was happening you know and so i'm glad 343 is kind of going much more simplified story but the thing is that halo 5 story was really complicated and continuing that story in halo infinite it's gonna be tricky about exactly what you can put in while also not being overbearing to the player when it comes to the content that's going to be within the game. Oh, here's the next big reveal, guys. Here's a section that I think you've probably been hearing a lot of people talk about with Classic Halo and this mission in particular. This is the mission that they're talking about right here, where you have this open area you can roam around in with vehicles, you can do it on foot. Uh, there's multiple types of enemies and things like that to go about fighting. There's little Easter eggs and little hidden pockets. There's good stuff right here to find the kind of, you know, give your character a better lowdown things. So this section right here is going to be essentially Halo Infinite in a nutshell is this next upcoming section. Like right here, like right here, there's like a pod that just dropped right here trying to find these drop pods. I'm going to pick up that sniper rifle because obviously having a sniper rifle is a uh, pretty awesome in Halo. So whenever I'm playing this mission, I always just start off with like the outer ones and finish off with the Forerunner structure. I feel like it's a more cinematic way to kind of uh, start finish off with those missions. But of course, then you can kind of go about doing it however you like, which is so great about this mission and what's going to be great about Halo Infinite. Well, another aspect is like, how is Cortana going to play into this whole thing? We do know that we learned from the Discover Hope trailer that Master Chief has like a new Cortana chip. It's a new Cortana chip. Like it's the exact same designation code on the written on the chip except it's like one number higher meaning that it's like another cortana essentially in a way because each ai chip is written with like a certain number and certain lettering as well to match the name of the ai itself so are we gonna get like a special new like dumb cortana in a way that's not like a smart a but like a dumb ai also blair i don't know man like there's like i said there's so many different ways to go about telling the story that like if we could spend like i could make like 20 videos speculating on each part about halo's story and exactly like what 343 can do about it but ultimately it's just going to be up to creative choices and what they need to do to tell a cohesive story within halo infinite i have a feeling the gameplay is going to be there and i think the visuals are going to be there uh the big thing is just going to be like how they're going to tell this story it's a master chief focus story while also being epic and and but also being something that's you know deep lore but also something that's very accessible to people who just kind of jump in and start playing like i said there's a million different ways they can go about doing it i i trust 343 because i feel like halo 4 story was actually really great halo 5s was just a mess but uh, if they kind of condensed it down a bit more it could have been really good i feel um and you know i'm not too bent out about like cortana be like being coming the villain in halo 5. i think it's just actually like it made a logical progression, I feel, with it, where, like, Halo 4, Cortana was going to go rampant. They wanted to turn her off, basically. I can imagine with a smart AA wanting to have some form of preservation. I mean, that's kind of written within their code. At least I kind of get a feeling of that. So you would think they would want to stay alive and just be like, oh, okay, my time has come, you know? There's going to be eventually an AI that's going to be, like, standing up and be like, no, I want to stay alive. I want to make myself possible to last forever kind of thing all right we got that one completed survivors you go off do your thing i'm gonna go off into the next checkpoint like even this mission right here there's two different ways you can enter in this location if i remember correctly you can go down that way or you can go around this way as well there's so many different pathing options you can utilize within this uh this mission which makes it so great which is why it's going to be the basis of Halo Infinite as a whole. What's gonna happen with Fireteam Osiris? What's gonna happen with Blue Team since it's gonna be a Master Chief focused story? 
Now, we, from what we know from Shadows of Reach, like, Blue Team is with Master Chief the entire time. And so, like, is it going to be something along those lines? Because we do know that Shadows of Reach is a bit of a introduction to, like, the world that they're trying to build for Halo Infinite. But exactly how it's going to tie into it, they said it's not necessary, but I can imagine being something that's really, uh, you know, important to kind of keep in, in context of things and stuff like that. I mean, I recently just listened through all of Shadows of Reach, and, like, honestly, like, not a whole lot happens within the book. Like, you're not really missing out on anything <laughs> if you don't. Uh, read the book or listen to the audiobook. So, I'm currently going through Point of Light. Uh, I mean, Guilty Spark is in Point of Light, so could we see Guilty Spark come in Halo Infinite? I mean, I think that would be cool. Guilty Spark's actually one of my favorite characters within Halo, because I like how, depending on the context of the situation, he's either helping you or he's hurting you, which I think is just a cool dynamic for a character in general. They're not so just one-track minded, one straightforward, just like, oh, I am the bad guy, I do bad things. It's more complicated. But of course then, Halo also does benefit from a simplified story of being like, I am the bad guy, I do bad things, you need to stop me. That's kind of where Eshron's role fits in. But there's always been a layer of complexity when it comes to Halo's storytelling. It's never, it's never ever been so straightforward. There's always been some kind of twist, some kind of element to the storytelling that gives different characters motives or gives characters different meaning to be in the story and things like that. That's one issue that Halo 5 certainly ran into, was just having so many characters, right? And they all are meant to serve a purpose, but their purpose is really just to be an extra character within the world, rather than being a good, a proper addition. They're just more there just because they need to have, you know, a squad of four, essentially, to match the co-op campaign style gameplay. But you do know that Halo Infinite will have cooperative campaign gameplay. Uh, I do, we do know that it'll be two player split screen, four player online co-op when it comes to Halo Infinite. How will those four players within the campaign play out? Uh, I mean, no one really knows for sure until except the people who've actually had a chance to play Halo Infinite. I could sworn I remember hearing something about saying that like, if you play co-op, uh, the player one's Master Chief and the three other players are your custom Spartans or something like that for multiplayer. I would love that. Because that's one thing I think Reach did a really cool job of, is bringing in your custom Spartan into the campaign. If there's some way to do that with Halo Infinite, that'd be super cool. But obviously, it becomes a little more difficult to do that because obviously you're playing as Master Chief. You're not playing as like, you know, a blank soldier, like kind of were with Halo Reach in a way. Higher surviving Oh no, I ran you over! Damn it! <laughs> I didn't mean to, dude. It's just the physics, man. I swear. I just love how this section of the mission, too, since we got the second checkpoint, it's changed each time with the situation, right? First time was just some aliens in the way. Second time we had some banshees. Then we got some drop pods coming in, dropping in some more bad guys in the way, just making the enemy count larger. But this is where I always like to finish off the last mission right here. I'm like, look at this. Oh, the art, it's so beautiful. But yeah, this is where I always like to finish off this mission just because I feel it's more uh, cinematic to end up on this Forerunner structure. And just because like the Halo ring and the beautiful Vista and stuff like that. It's so cool. And this is what, you know, Halo Infinite, like I said earlier, this is what Halo Infinite's campaign is going to be like, you know? It's going to be rather open-ended. You can do what you want and play how you want, when you want. Really cr which is just great. I love that idea. Putting a bigger emphasis on the sandbox as a whole. Make sure that, you know, people get to play the game how they want, when they want. A really cool thing about the campaign as well that we learned from the recent development update is campaign enemies are not going to be the same every time. There's gonna be different situations every depending on what your loadout is essentially. Basically, if you're playing on foot, you'll probably find more uh, anti-infantry guys. If you're playing in a vehicle, like we just came in right here, you'll probably see more anti-vehicle stuff. Oh my god, we haven't even used the sniper yet. Oh my gosh. Oh, how tragic. I haven't had a chance to blow off a head yet. Here we go. Here it comes. Ready? Ah! <laughs> Which is just like that by itself, having dynamic enemy spawns for Halo is so game-changing that like Nobody's playthrough is going to be the same. There's not going to be like, oh, you do this at this situation because of, you know, this is the enemy types that you fight against. You can control that with your loadout, but you won't be able to have the exact same experience as somebody else. Now, I'm sure there'll be like tips and tricks, right? Like, oh, it's easier to go into this on foot than in a vehicle because of the enemy types you play against. But uh, just like knowing that's a thing is just so freaking cool, man. 
that's just so cool. I love it. It gives so much replayability to the campaign. It just, it's, I'm just excited about it. Again, like an openness of like, can't, wait, what are you shooting at? Yeah, but, hi, yeah, it's great to see you too. <laughs> What's going on? Why was he shooting the ceiling? Oh God, no friend. Dodge, duck, dive. There we go, he saved a lot, great. Get them alive. Love this. Love you love to see it happen. So another thing is like how are they gonna make the campaign more replayable, right? I think it's gonna be a huge emphasis within Halo Infinite's campaign and the PvE elements side of things. No, friend! Survive! No! Because you know this world is so expansive, so large, so many things you can do with it, right? It'd be a shame to only have it really playable like once through, like most Halo campaigns have been, right? Where Halo campaigns are just like narrative experience, you play it through it once, and the only reason why you play it through again is either you're trying to do a challenge in the MCC, or you just want to have some good old-fashioned member berries. But we'll just have to wait and see until we know more about Halo Infinite. This is getting close towards the end of the mission. I'm actually kind of surprised that we talked this long, but hey man, Halo Infinite's campaign is going to be something very different that we've ever experienced before. I'm very excited about it. I cannot wait for Halo Infinite's campaign. This is going to be the first thing I play through to avoid any kind of spoilers. Um, you know, we touched on a lot of different topics. If there's anything you're looking forward for, looking forward to for Halo Infinite's campaign, let me know in the comment section down below. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, as we take off, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.